Hello and welcome to this Exchange Wire Vox Pop. I'm Lindsay Roundtree, CEO at Exchange Wire, and I am joined today by Kudzai Mabaiwa, who is the Head of Performance at Spark Foundry UK. Hello, Kudzai. Hi, thank How you for doing? having me. I'm well, thank Great you. Great to have you here. Thank you. Um, and we're talking like largely around performance marketing today and the kind of the, the different challenges, opportunities that exist as a performance marketer today. Yeah. And I want to first of all ask you, you know, the, the, the industry is rapidly changing, advertising and technology around the advertising as we know it is, is constantly moving, constantly evolving. How do you and your team stay up to date from a kind of the, the tech and tools you use, but also just understanding, yeah. you know, exactly what's happening in this kind of vast world that we live in? Yeah, I mean, you summarized it really well. Like it's, it's changing every single day and there's a lot that's coming up for all of our teams to, to really learn about and really understand. So, you know, I'll focus on like two elements of, of what we're doing at Spark to really make sure that we stay ahead of the curve and everyone knows what the latest um, technology adoptions are. So the first one is around the team. So we have a very strong culture of experimentation and mm -hmm. testing and learning across the teams. So when a new product does come out, it's very much, how are we going to test it? we want to have a good methodology on how we actually test the new technology, test the new product that has come out, understand what it is we want to get out of it, and then look at how it's performing based off of our clients' KPIs. Then from there, we then look at a full rollout if, if that is what is what, what the actual experimentation has taught us. But on top of that, um, our teams also need to really look at the industry, understand mm. what is happening in the industry, and um, like we were speaking before, like when you're just kind of honed in on a particular client and what you're working on, you may not necessarily realize that, um, that other things are changing around you. So we are really fortunate at Spark, well, at Publicis, to have access to Marcel, which is our internal ah, yes. um, intranet and planning, uh, sorry, training platform. Thousands of um, really well curated uh, training courses are available and it's a combination of uh, virtual training, um, hybrid, some in-person training, um, others that's kind of run by a lot of the specialist teams within, within publicists themselves and across Spark as well. And then others where third parties are brought in to really train the teams. So we know that we've got ready access to a lot of learning materials. We also you know, subscribe to, to industry newsletters. Our partnerships with, um, with all the big platforms is really strong. We're premier partners across um, all of the different uh, platforms as well so they come in and they give us a lot of training so I feel like as an agency we've got we've got what we need to help us just make sure that our teams are across across um, what's happening within the technology so the second part of how we really stay ahead of uh, um, any technology changes is understanding that the platform world, as we call it, is really evolving and we have to stay competitive. So we have access to a technology and intelligence team within Publicis. Mm. So Spark work extremely closely with them. And they were basically created to develop bespoke proprietary, um, proprietary uh, technology for our clients. So this means right. we're not just relying on what the platforms are giving us, but we're actually um, addressing specific needs that the clients have that are really critical to their business and developing products that actually help to drive profit for them as well. So one such um, product was um, created to answer the question that you get from clients around how efficient can I make my search activity run? Do I need to be spending so much in branded search versus um, just allowing organic search to, um, to, to, to take up all of the um, all of the traffic or all the sales. And with this, our TNI team uh, worked to develop a product called OneSearch, which um, essentially answers this question of how can we make search more efficient um, holistically and not just looking at it in two silos. So we've seen over 30% um, in terms of efficient savings across branded search across a number of our clients. Wow. Uh, so this is, it's big savings, but it also really pushes um, our teams and us as an agency to make sure we're not just relying on the platforms, but we're also coming up with products and, and just ideas of how we can go beyond the platform and still be able to deliver value to our clients. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to have that power <laughs> behind you to yeah. be able to pull everything together. And Absolutely. you mentioned Marcel there, and it brings me nicely on to my next question, which is around AI. 
big, big topic of conversation, absolutely huge and kind of one of the, the big potential game changers of what advertising yep. looks like and how these companies like agencies are actually running. How are you um, bringing AI and, you know, advanced machine learning into, into what you do in your day to day? Yeah, very good question. I think it's um, it's probably more skyrocketed with like the the, the interest around ChatGPT mm. that's really come in. We've had teams sort of like play around with ChatGPT, try to find quick ways to just make their their day to day a lot more efficient. But I think in terms of the platforms that we use as performance marketers, if we look at how platforms like Google Ads um, and even uh, the Meta platforms as well, uh, they've all been created and work off of um, AI. So all of their bidding algorithms, how they create um, uh, ads. So if you look at things like responsive search ads, that's all like machine learning, AI driven way to, to test creative and make yeah. sure it's served to the right user based on the search terms. So Google have been doing this for ages. And now we've seen the release of Performance Max, which um, which is shaking up a lot of search marketers. <laughs> because it's, um, it's completely changing how, how and what we're used to when you look at how you run a search campaign. Does it, does it bring a bit, of, a bit of fear into you in terms of the kind of like, you know, the lack, lack of control you might have over certain things? Yeah. What think, you're used um, to versus, well, welcome back to the black box. Exactly, right? So Google had always been, you have the control, you are in control. Yeah. And search marketers, we are control freaks because that is what works, that is what we saw would drive the, the performance. But um, now with Performance Max, you can, it's a bigger ecosystem. Mm. You can use this machine learning and AI functionality that it has to optimize uh, towards a business specific API. So, I mean, it's great. It delivers uh, results and we've seen that across some of our clients. But like you said, that loss of control, that lack of transparency, then also raises questions around brand safety. Around, oh, yeah, around creative control, especially with um, clients that are in the regulated industry. They need to obviously uh, apply or uh, apply to, uh, to the different regulations that are within their industries. So, yeah, so it brings a lot of questions. So I think a, a very balanced approach is what we have to take. So whilst people can go out there, definitely test it, definitely learn it, understand it, but don't, um, don't ignore the other sides of it that you do need to look at, which are the lack of transparency and the lack of control. That's really good advice, actually. It's a very good point. Like, you can get too carried away, can't you? Absolutely. And it's a reminder to take a step back and yeah. look at what the, all the options are in front of you. Exactly. And you make don't it want part to be... of the strategy, but don't make it your entire strategy. That's exactly what I was yeah. going to say. Exactly. You don't want it to be, like, to just be an AI-driven company because mm. that's not... That's, that's not going to be the best uh, returns for your clients. So you want to take that balanced approach. You want to make sure that your, you as a performance marketer are still inputting the right strategy, inputting the right data as well into, into this machine that we're all relying on. So yeah, just giving it the right strategies in order to work well. Yeah, very interesting. <clears throat> and are you using AI in any way um, to help with creative and that kind of thing? Or, or is that still kind of being investigated? That's probably still more being investigated in terms of like a separate way of us doing mm. it. But when we're looking at the platforms and how they use AI technology, that's probably where we're leaning into right. it a little bit more. But, um, but yeah, still being investigated, still trying to understand the best way to, to use it. Interesting. And I want to come on to um, success metrics and KPIs because, you know, performance marketers, we, we're all about results, all about ROI driven, kind of what are the, how, how is that evolving? Are you seeing the lines blurring more between performance and brand? Is there kind of performance branding? Is there not really mm. line at all anymore? Yeah. And what are the, 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 what does success look like for a performance marketer today? Definitely. I think, um, Again, back to like what performance marketers were really used to. It's um, optimizing to the CPAs, optimizing mm. to uh, video completion rates, just those more really tangible day-to-day -day metrics that you look at within your, within your platforms. But now when you look at the, the way consumers are moving across platforms, mm. they've got so many different touch points. You no longer have that that view of just only really hard working performance at bottom funnel, you've got cross um, just a, through the funnel, I should say, through the funnel uh, performance happening. So with, um, with a lot of like our performance indicators, you really want to look at what value is your 
are your customers bringing to you as a business? How much value should you place on each individual uh, customer as well? Because that is going to bring over the, the profits and what is a true indicator of your performance. So when you look at measurements around lifetime value and really understand the lifetime uh, value and success metrics of a customer, then you're looking at your true kind of like performance metrics and still relying on your day-to-day -day metrics, which is things like ROI, things like revenue, things like CPA, they're all extremely important still to optimize on a day-to-day -day basis. But just having that view of how much should I be spending to get this customer to be loyal to me is what's going to really help drive your, your performance overall. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, and talking of, talking of customers and kind of how, how you're learning about them and being loyal to them, obviously there's a, a huge change about to hit the industry, which is the demise of the third party cookie, yeah. which is I'm sure um, resulting in you working with all your clients to help to maximize and leverage their first party data. Mm -hmm. um, and but do so in a privacy safe way. There's obviously re regulation around privacy concerns. How are you navigating that? And what's that look like from the agency perspective and also from the client perspective? And who's driving the conversation around first party data? Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's all pending, isn't it? Mm, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 20, 2024, yeah. that's, um, that's what we're all looking, I shouldn't say looking forward to, but it's coming. <laughs> you know, it's coming. There's probably not much excitement <laughs> around it, but yeah, it's yeah, definitely coming. It's definitely coming. <laughs> um, so we've, we've really done a lot with, um, with our clients and, and our teams as well. So go, going back to the educational point, just around our teams, making sure that they are confident when they're speaking to clients around what they should be preparing for in the cookie-less world. And then in terms of our clients as well, we have different, um, just different work streams set up within the agency to help us. Uh, one kind of audits where our clients kind of sit in terms of their understanding of Cookulus and what changes they need to make on their end. Yeah. We also have um, a lot of training sessions and a lot of like... Um, what can I call them, like breakfast sessions and seminars that we've held in conjunction with, um, with partners like Google, but also with our clients as well, and internal teams within, um, within publishers who lead on our data science, on our tag teams that come in and they've got a strong understanding around the changes that are happening, um, especially using a lot of the, the, the technology side of it. So they will run these sessions and they will train our clients and they will give um, our clients their point of view of like what they should then take and feedback to their development teams internally. Um, I think in terms of who is, who is kind of leading the conversations, uh, us as an agency should really work in collaboration with our clients and yeah. that's what we do. So we work with them to, to showcase the expertise that we have, give them the, the information that we have to help drive them to then be confident in what they need to do and change on their sides as well. So it's, it's working together in just making sure they've got a clear plan on how to address the cookie this future, how to make sure that all the data they're collecting is consented, they're using the right kind of like um, modeling and tagging that's required in this new privacy first and world. Do you feel like it's forced, and maybe forced is too harsh a word, but do you feel like it's promoted um, um, and encouraged strong relationships between you and your clients because they because you're you're both going on this journey together yeah. and need and each other's support to really kind of get to the next stage. That's yeah, that's a really that's a really good point. I honestly hadn't thought about that, but <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it, it definitely does. It brings up a lot of conversations. Mm. It also shows that we are forward thinking and we're not waiting for the last minute to kind of like make these changes. And we've really been on the same journey that they are going on as well, and we're supporting them on that journey too. So, yes, I'm confident that our clients and those that work with us um, are very confident in, in what's coming up. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure they yeah, are. But definitely. Some way, somehow, you'll get there together. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we will. We will and do. we're all trying to get there together <laughs> somehow, and we'll see what happens in 2024. That is it. <clears throat> My final question to you is around the, um, the future of performance marketing and kind of what you see the future to be. Obviously, you already mentioned kind of the measurement and, and how that's changing and evolving, and we've talked about technology evolving more generally. Are you seeing emerging technologies like AR and VR play mm. a role that might typically have been... In my, in my head, kind of more sort of very brand focused. Yeah. And now, can performance clients kind of get involved with emerging tech that it might not have been kind of really within their wheelhouse before? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's it's 
that that whole field is growing so much, AR, VR technology, it's grown a lot, not just in the, the hardware that's coming through, but just in the actual advertising dollars or pounds that, that are being spent in it and the investment that's happening across the, across the board. If you look at um, social platforms in particular, so um, places like Snap, they were Snapchat, they were basically built on AR technology mm. and that's, that, that's their focus. They've made it extremely accessible to consumers and then they've made it affordable for brands and marketers to be able to use, to use AR technology in their advertising. And what this then means is consumers and marketers, you get this engagement with brands that you probably just never would have had before in an online world. So when you're looking at different uh, products such as makeup um, who allow people to do virtual try on so you can now virtually try on your makeup before you actually go into, into a store to buy it. You can do loads of things like visit different countries, visit museums, all of this without actually leaving your, your home. It just gives that relationship, the brand and the customer relationship, a completely different meaning. Yeah. And then as marketers, what we then do with this is, is essentially make sure we're targeting the right audience when we're, when we're running any um, activity that includes a, um, any AR or, or VR uh, type work. And then link directly into products, which really makes it a bit of a seamless um, path to conversion for us. So you get the engagement, you get the conversion, you get a customer that, and the brand gets a customer that is already almost kind of like bought into the brand. So you've almost done that entire job of just brand and performance marketing all in one, essentially, all in like one spot. So yes, I think definitely AR, VR, it's driving a lot of what we're doing. Um, it's still new, mm. and I go back to my point in that it's still new, there's still, a lot of elements that we need to learn from it. So it's just about identifying when is the best time to actually use it for your clients and when is the best time that it will drive some form of performance benefit to them as well. It's so interesting and it must be quite exciting actually kind of being able to work with these things and sort of yeah. looking back thinking you never believe we'd be here uh, 10 years ago and, and the things we can do now versus mm. you know say a, a paid search marketer versus the things that you have access to yeah. and the, the the levers you can pull now for a for a client for a marketer than before mm, absolutely i think um it's um it's great it's made our our, our jobs a lot more easier yeah. like i've been in the industry for over 10 years and i remember the days in search where you have an excel spreadsheet you're typing in keywords you're researching across all different keyword tools mm -hmm. and now you're in a world where you don't necessarily even have to launch a campaign with keywords it, it, the the machines the ai is all picking the data off of off of your owned assets so it's changed like ridiculously and not just over the past 10 years, over the past two years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just about how do we make sure our roles are complementing the changes as well. So it means we're changing the way that essentially some of our, some of our talent is now becoming more strategic as opposed to be more just hands on keyboards. Interesting. Yeah, having more around training and understanding the creative development, which could have been something that we haven't necessarily been a part of before as performance marketers. You tend to just be given the creative, but now you can actually be part of that creative uh, process as well. So there's a lot of change in terms of the roles that we're looking at, but I think it's all positive. And I go back to my previous points is, yes, AI, is all coming in. It's helping us be more efficient, more effective, and um, and it's innovating how we're working. But if we, but I think what we shouldn't lose sight of is just taking that balanced approach. Yeah, yeah. Take a balanced approach. Test and learn um, how you're going to actually uh, roll out anything, and have that collaboration with clients as well, because we're all on the same journey together. We all want to drive results. So making sure that we've got that right balance. Um, versus just giving everything to the to AI, I think then we'll be in a good place. Yeah, absolutely. I think mm. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're out of time, but thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for, for watching. Me. Thank you for having me. Thank you.